What's up everyone, I'm Mitch Miller and you're watching the Online Prosperity Show. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show and today we've got none other than Mitch. Mitch, how are you doing today? Amazing, man. Great to see you. Good stuff. Now, Mitch is actually in charge of helping you and your business break through even when you seem to have lost it all. And even if you're doing well, Mitch will actually find better ways uh, for you to do that and help you better. He's actually currently traveling at the moment, um, helping people just like you through seminars, workshops, and a few breakthrough retreats. And he's also producing information products, which you can find and access on his blog. Mitch, we know you're on holiday and enjoying yourself. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, man. Let's do this, I'm happy. Uh, okay, great. Now Mitch, obviously you being a direct res response copywriter, can you tell us the biggest challenge that you see other digital marketers facing today? Uh, actually, the biggest challenge I see them facing is that they don't, understand how important direct response copywriting is um, or they just or they just don't uh, put the effort into doing that first so uh, everybody is concerned with um, the newest shiniest object thing because that's what's being sold to us we're sold the new uh, LinkedIn strategy we're sold the new Instagram thing the funnels the Facebook ads all of these mechanisms or uh, they're just platforms, right? Instagram is a platform for your pictures. Uh, Facebook's a platform for yourself. And so all of these things that were sold, they're all platforms just for our message. However, if we don't have the message right first, then all these platforms and all these shiny objects that we, that are exciting, like admittedly very exciting, they're all completely useless to you if you can't speak in a way that convinces somebody to do something or you don't have a, a good enough quality message inside of those things. So that's the biggest thing as I see is people just don't take into account that that's probably the first thing you need to learn because everything else that you're going to spend money on is useless without that. Great. So obviously you're talking about the three M's here, the message, the market and the media, right? Boom. That's it. That's, that's, that's the core. That's the core of it. Great. So obviously if that is part of it, so what sort of mistake are they actually doing that you notice that these digital marketers um, are doing, you know, not following up those uh, three M's? Where, where does that sort of lead them to if they don't follow that up? Uh, it, 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 it leads you into the land of doing um, what everyone else is doing. So because everybody is um, focusing on just the media, they're thinking that the Facebook or the Instagram itself is going to do, do the work for them. And so they put posts out and they do all the stuff, but nobody pays attention. No one likes, no one buys. And then they wonder what, what they're doing wrong. What they're doing wrong is they just haven't found out how to be persuasive. Um, but what, what I see is when people get into it, they're like, okay, I understand, you know, I got to be more persuasive or I got to do some copywriting. What they then don't do is they, they don't sell like they mean it. So there's they're basically they're, they're, they're selling from the back of their heels. They're kind of just like, you wouldn't really want to buy this, would you? It's, it's like the vibe is that they're not really giving it their all. And people can sense when you're not 100% certain about something. And if you're not 100% certain, then they're going to sense that you're not certain. And they're going to wonder why you're not 100% certain. This might even be subconscious. They're going to wonder why you're not certain. And their imagination is going to default to something negative. Great. So if, if obviously your heart and soul is not in your message and in your market, then whatever media you're going to use is, is not going to, you know, portray the message. That's, that's what you're saying there, right? What I'm saying like in a complete nutshell would be if you're afraid to sell them 100%, then they're going to be afraid to buy from you and they're not even going to know why. <laughs> because of the vibe that you're, you're bringing. Because you're making them afraid. Yeah, exactly. Great. So I read in uh, one of your articles that there's two distinct uh, ways of marketing. Um, so for the digital marketer that's just starting, what they're faced with is just the visual sort of marketing. Is there another way that you can explain to people? Yeah, yeah, I'll try to explain it in a different way. So um, the, the typical way uh, you're, everyone is taught to advertise, whether it's in school or whether you see the real estate uh, agent around you with his uh, billboards and everything blown up, the typical way we're taught in the commercials on TV is let's, uh, let's have some glitzy, uh, glitzy glamour style videos and, 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 and pictures and let's create some feelings and then let's maybe state the name of our product, kind of like what Apple does or Coca-Cola. We copy what the big companies do 
Um, and that's called branding and that's brand awareness and, and billions are spent on that. However, you know, when you're first starting, you don't have the money or the time to do that type of branding and that type of awareness. You need a sale. And so what the smart business owners do and the smart marketers do is what's called direct response marketing. And what direct response marketing is, is it's accountable. And it's, that means for every dollar that you spend on that type of advertising, you should know and get a return on that investment. Because if you did like some sort of visual branding ad where you just kind of did just some, you know, hey, this is me, and you didn't actually ask for a sale or ask for a lead or anything, then there's no way for you to accurately know if that specific offering actually made you any money because you should be doing multiple things at once. And so uh, direct response means simply you're trying to elicit a response from somebody, whether it's in the form of them giving you money or their email address or whatever, you want that response directly and immediately. So you can, first of all, make money now, which is better than making money a lot later. Um, and, but the money that the, the tiny bit of money that we do have, at least know what we know when we put it somewhere, then it's going to give us money back. That'd be like putting money in the stock market and being like, I don't know what stocks I invested in. I don't know if I'm going to get any money back. So let me just hope and pray that at the end of the year, I got more money in my pocket. That wouldn't be smart. Nobody would ever do that. Yet we seem to do that in our business. Why not do a direct response where you know, okay, I'm going to put it in these blue chip stocks. I'm going to get uh, you know, this kind of return later or, or soon. Cool sound. So Mitch, you, you're talking a lot about this direct response. You're talking a lot about how you can actually get customers to pay you there and there if you make them pay you um this is something you would have learned okay let's say we strip off all the knowledge that you have you no longer you know make the amount of money that you're making today and you're going to start off as a digital marketer right now what's the first thing that you would start doing and how would you tackle it so the first thing that i would start doing is i would have hopefully understood that copywriting and writing to sell and the art of like basically putting words, the specific words in a specific order that just basically magically makes money for whatever you're selling. I would immediately uh, either do one of two things uh, to get money immediately. I would go to, I would go and find um, people who uh, understand how important this is themselves. So let's say you go to ClickBank, which is a marketplace where there's a whole bunch of different types of products for sale by marketers, uh, who understand this type of stuff and they can, I would find, um, I'd find their offers and see where they're dropping the ball on the copy, where they're, where they're just not putting enough effort in or where they've rushed or whatever. And then I would probably just make a screencast video and show them all these mistakes and all the cool things that they could do. And I'm a, a listen, let me make these changes for you um, uh, at, at my, on my dime. And we'll just, we'll, can, and then it, when it works for you, can we, can you just pay me a little bit of money? And then from then on, you know, you can either pay me to make you more money or you can refer me to other people and a little bit of money, not, not internet marketing, but just in general, as a person, if I had some saved up and all of that, I would probably get into the affiliate game and I would start selling other people's stuff because I don't have to create a product. I don't have to. Um, deal with the fulfillment or anything. If there's a great product that someone has, I could write my own sales letter for it, my own advertisement for it, and then just sell it and then just make a commission. And I'd probably do that. And the reason I said to have a little bit of money is because I would get the website uh, up, I'd make the sales uh, page, which would then just link out to their own product page or whatever. Great stuff. Now you are what they term a digital nomad and you're commanding fees um, well, well over in the uh, six figure mark for just you sitting down with somebody. So I hope you're not going to be billing us for this interview after this. Um, <laughs> I, I want to know what's, what's a typical day for, for Mitch yeah. right now. Um, you know, now that you, you're where you're at right now. Uh, a typical day is actually pretty easy. So the typical day involves, uh, massages and, um, and and just going to have uh, fun fun dinners, going down and writing content. I'll spend a couple of reading now. Um, it's very very relaxed, and um, I hired an executive assistant finally, so a lot of the, the 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 small stuff is taken care of. 
Um, I spend a lot of my time now uh, just crafting ideas, um, thinking, um, okay, we're busy to have who is very um, incredible with the, te the technical stuff and being able to just, like a beast, just whip that stuff out. And since my, my, my talent is content creation and getting in front of people and, and positioning and, 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 and build partners, incredible, everything that happens after that point. So it's cool. It's not like, it's not like I get to sit around all day eating grapes and having massages and he just grinds on the computer doing stuff like it's not like that it's it's we both you know it, we both have our our strengths and we play to them and, and it works well so but a lot of the time man i must tell you it's uh i get to do what i want with my days which is just incredible and i wish that for everybody watching this that's 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 pretty cool there mitch obviously this show is designed for you um, that is starting scaling and growing your business. And obviously now you can see the whole potential of what you can also go through um, if you start actually doing things right. Now, Mitch might have a bit of advice for us, um, you know, for somebody who is especially starting um, and is going into digital marketing for the first time. What would you tell them? What would you get them to expect? And how would you want them to, you know, to, to approach this whole um, industry as a whole? So it, 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 my advice, I don't expect anyone to take it because I, I wouldn't have taken my own advice back in the day because it, it's so exciting. You hop into this world and you realize that there's, um, there's all these awesome people having all this crazy uh, advice to do with all these different types of, I mean, all the different opportunities that are around. This rabbit hole that we get ourselves sucked into is so exciting because we know this is literally it, somewhere within it if we can grasp it, holds the keys to everything that we want in life. And we understand that. Um, so it's so exciting that we, we hop into everything. We learn everything and we talk to everybody. And, 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 and it's like, it's like going to Disneyland as a, as a fucking child <laughs> to me. So, but the, the problem in that is that because the barrier to entry is so low for anyone to come in and start talking, um, it, there, it took me 10 years to get focused and actually start to get some traction and success. And I fucking failed for that, for that first 10 years. And the reason is, is because it was like a kid at Disneyland, I didn't know what ride to go on. And so I'd wait in line, like as a metaphor, I'd wait in line for a ride. And then I got impatient and, and jumped to the next line. And I never actually got to ride a ride. So I never got focused. And so my, my, my piece of advice that for someone to save like the, the, an incredible learning curve would be to take the time to understand if you're going to get into uh, internet marketing or digital nomad, understand what you're really doing at the end of the day is, is you're selling, you're building a business, you're selling a product. So in order to sell that product, that's what happens first. A business can't get built if you don't sell something first. So understand that your first priority is to learn how to sell something. Uh, it doesn't really matter what people are. I don't know what to sell. It doesn't matter. Learn how to sell. Just use any product as a, as a, as a, as a uh, practice tool. But um, since you need to learn how to sell, go back and only learn first from the very best who have done it in the world and learn those guys first. And then after that, you can, you know, go, you know, because people get just so bogged down with all these new gurus and these new things. It's, it's, it, there's nothing new under the sun when you're learning how to sell. That's, that shit's been covered. So my, my advice is, uh, the book Scientific Advertising by Claude Hopkins, uh, John Caples, anything, any books by him, uh, any books by Robert Collier, uh, and uh, Eugene Schwartz. Um, these are the uh, these are the, the the masters of advertising, and they put their they put basically the definitive guides on how to sell uh, back in like 1910 or whatever it was. And, and those principles have never changed. And that's where all the people of today get their advice from. So you might as well go upstream, learn those solid principles from the best. And then from there, when you have that solid foundation, now you can do digital marketing and just completely crush it. Pretty cool. Right. So you, you have given us a few resources um, to, you know, to overcome uh, overwhelm. You know, you've mentioned uh, scientific advertising. You've mentioned uh, Eugene Swartz and all that stuff. They they could be like you mentioned at the beginning of the interview that a lot of people have the uh, shiny object syndrome and they're just chasing their tail, uh, just wanting to jump onto the next available uh, thing for them to latch onto. What are you personally 
doing to ensure that you are continuously growing, you're continuously delivering, and you're continuously on top of your game? Uh, everything that I can, but it doesn't mean I'm doing it that well. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very difficult for me to stay focused even today because I, I'm just as curious. I love, I love this stuff just as anybody. So what I've decided to do is my opposed media, our actual marketing consulting company where I give marketing advice um, and keep it real. I try to keep it real for everyone. That never changes. That's never going to change to the day I die. And I've decided that. So anything that we do, I can have a business here and there. We offshoot, we try, maybe our business tries, uh, tries a different, uh, type of product training or we try this seminar or that, or maybe I go into a completely different business and maybe do some solar panels or whatever it is. I always have that one core business that I stick to and that's, that's st I stay focused to because if I get off track with that, I feel like I could get lost that <laughs> and never get find my way back. So I, I have one core business that keeps me centered and anchored and then we can do other things from there. Great stuff. You're a digital nomad. So how can people get uh, in touch with you? Somebody might have been inspired by what you said and they're watching this show and they might want to get in touch with you. How can they get all of you? Cool. So there's two ways. The first way is on Facebook, in my personal profile. Um, that's not the best way to build your following, by the way. I'm kind of trapped in my own personal profile, but you can, uh, you can, you can search Mitch Miller and you can follow me or, or, or friend request me. And then the website opposedmedia.com, O-P-P-O-S-E-D media.com is where we have a bunch of free stuff. Uh, like um, blog posts and videos. And then there's the Miller files because my last name's Miller. So it's the Miller files uh, com is a, a library of um, all my best courses, books, um, cheat sheets and webinars and stuff that are 100% free. Great stuff. Mitch, I can't thank you enough for joining us on the online prosperity show today. Thank you. Uh, and hopefully you're going to enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, my friend. This was wonderful. All right, cool stuff. Anyway, join us on the next episode and hopefully this one has been very insightful. Till the next episode, bye for now.